meaning that if you want to reach similar molecule concentrations in the body and potentially similar thyroid hormone beta-1 activation, that you would need to compare 50.4 micrograms sobitrome to 100 micrograms T3. Vigor Steve here, let's discuss Sobiterome, also known as GC1 or QRX431, which was first synthesized in 1998 as a thyromimetic compound, which was specifically designed to selectively target thyroid hormone receptors. Sobiterome is a modified version of triiodothyronine, aka T3, with comparable affinity for the thyroid receptor beta-1, but just a tenfold lower or 0.1 times or 10% the affinity for the thyroid receptor alpha-1 compared to T3. Unlike thyroid hormones, sobiterome doesn't contain iodine and thus it isn't a substrate for the deiodinase enzymes which would otherwise cleave off one iodine atom from thyroxine T4 making it biologically active in the form of triiodothyronine. T3, sobiterome can be considered as a selective thyroid hormone receptor modulator, abbreviated to STHRM, and now the half natty broccoli boys are just creaming their pants with a half stiffy, thinking about adding some sterms to their SARMs only cycle. In the 1950s, researchers concluded that thyroid hormones were not suitable medications to lower serum cholesterol and serum triglyceride levels, as they were found to have deleterious effects on the heart, bones, and skeletal muscle. Then in the 1960s, research continued to investigate various thyroid hormone analogs and memetics, also known as thyromimetics, as well as the investigation into other lipid-lowering agents. Later in the early 1990s, thyroid receptor beta-1 selective thyromimetics were developed, ultimately leading to the discovery of sobiterome GC1 in 1998. So let's quickly compare sobiterome GC1 to triiodothyronine T3 and see how they differ. You see here that the half-life of T3 is anywhere between 10 to 22 hours. There's a lot of scientific evidence available on T3. That's why there's such a range. The oral bioavailability of T3 has an average of approximately 78%, but the range is anywhere between 69 to 99%, depending on the scientific evidence that you read. The molecular weight, though, is always the same, 650.977 Daltons. And you see here in the chemical formula and the chemical structure of T3 that it contains not only carbon and hydrogen, but also iodine and nitrogen. When you compare that to sobiterome GC1, with an established half-life of 7.2 hours, an oral bioavailability of 92%, so that is significantly higher, the molecular weight is approximately half that of T3 at 328.408 Daltons. And here you see on the chemical formula and the uh, chemical composition that it doesn't contain iodine and it doesn't contain nitrogen. So again, to clarify here, sobiterome has a molecular weight of 328.408 Daltons, which is half of that compared to triiodothyronine T3, which has a molecular weight of 650.977 Daltons, meaning that if you want to reach similar molecule concentrations in the body and potentially similar thyroid hormone beta-1 activation, that you would need to compare 50.4 micrograms sobiterome to 100 micrograms T3. And again, that's assuming that the oral bioavailability of sobiterome is similar to T3, but based on the scientific evidence and the averages, it seems that the oral bioavailability of sobiterome is a little bit higher, 92% versus 72% that of T3. So many of the animal models where sobiterome is directly compared to T3 at the exact same dosages, you see that T3 is about half as effective compared to sobiterome because at the exact same dosage, it probably results in half the amount of thyroid receptor beta-1 activation due to the difference in molecular weight. Let's briefly discuss the function of thyroid hormones T4 and T3 so you have a clear understanding of what you could expect from sobiterome supplementation. Both T4 and T3 are tyrosine and iodine-based thyroid hormones. Thyroxine T4 is an inactive, somewhat inactive, pro-hormone of T3. It's primarily produced in a thyroid gland in response to thyroid-stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland, and it interacts with the thyroid receptor alpha-1, beta-1 to 3, albeit with low affinity. Triiodothyronine is biologically active. Selenium-containing deiodinase enzymes found in the liver, kidneys, and skeletal muscle cleave one iodine atom from thyroxine T4, metabolizing T4 into a biologically active triiodothyronine. 
which interacts with the thyroid receptor alpha 1 to 3 and beta 1 to 3, all with high affinity, albeit with slightly different levels of affinity. The ratio of T4 to T3 in serum is approximately 14 to 1. It contributes to energy regulation and basal metabolic rate. Thyroid hormones increase basal metabolic rate, required to sustain vital functions at rest, enhance oxygen consumption and energy utilization throughout the body. Thyroid hormones play a crucial role in body temperature regulation throughout their effects on metabolic rates by increasing cellular metabolism and they increase heat production known as thermogenesis. Thyroid hormones contribute to protein and lipid metabolism. Triiodothyronine T3 stimulates both protein synthesis and protein degradation. This is something we're trying to avoid by increasing the activity of RNA polymerase 1 and 3. Thyroid hormone stimulates cholesterol breakdown, increase LDL receptors, and accelerate lipolysis. This is something we definitely want by controlling our lipid levels and improving fat loss. And thyroid hormones contribute to improving body composition and lowering overall body weight. Thyroid hormones contribute to body growth and development, whether that's in infancy or adulthood. Thyroid hormones are essential for normal body growth and development, bone growth and maturation, development of the central nervous system, stimulating myelin production, neurotransmitter synthesis and axonal growth. Thyroid hormones promote wakefulness and alertness, contributing to cognitive function and mood regulation. They may act as neurotransmitters or neuromodulators themselves or exert their effects through interactions with established neurotransmitter systems, potentiating some sort of dopaminergic, serotonergic or GABAergic effect. Thyroid hormones increase cardiac function, specifically triiodothyronine, which increases both heart rate and force of contraction of the heart, enhancing cardiac output, increasing beta adrenergic receptor levels in the myocardium. This is why a combination of T3 with clenbuterol is so effective for fat loss, but also very effective to increase your heart rate for hours on end. Uh, T3 modulates blood pressure, increased systolic and decreased diastolic pressure, again, through the modulation of the force of contraction of the heart. Thyroid hormones regulate pituitary function and reproductive hormone production, increase gastrointestinal function and motility, contribute to insulin secretion and pancreatic islet cell function, which are all of the effects on the other organ systems of thyroid hormones. And there's various complications regarding thyroid hormones, including hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, autoimmune thyroid disorders like Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. And this is basically an aggregation, a summary of all of the thyroid hormone stimulating compounds, whether that's the production of thyroid stimulating hormone, thyroxine or triiodothyronine, or the activation of the thyroid receptor alpha 1 to 3 or beta 1 to 3, right? It's all aggregated here. So as you can see, you need to pay attention to your micronutrients. Yeah, here we go again. Vitamin A, whether that's beta carotene or retinol, they both contribute to thyroid function, as does... Vitamin B2, vitamin B3, vitamin B6, vitamin B9, vitamin B12, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, whether that's tocopherols or tocotrienols, both of them contribute to thyroid function. Vitamin K1, K2, MK4, vitamin K2, MK7, all contribute to thyroid function. Calcium, especially alongside vitamin D3 and K-complex formulations to help shuttling all of that calcium into bones. Uh, contributes to thyroid function, as does chromium, copper, iron, iodine, obviously, magnesium, selenium for those selenium-containing diodinase, enzymes cleaving one iodine atom from T4 into T3, making it biologically active. Zinc contributes to thyroid function, as does L-tyrosine. I mean, it's a tyrosine-based hormone after all, so you need your tyrosine in there. L-carnitine contributes, L-inositol and myo-inositol contributes various amino acids like L-arginine, L-asparagine, L-citrulline, L-glutamine, L-leucine, L-serine, and l valine all contribute to thyroid function. And even flavonoids and adoptogens like curcumin C3 complex or KSM66 ashwagandha root extract all contribute to thyroid function in various degrees. And well, if you're metabolically or you have an autoimmune disease, or you don't want to eat healthy, then there's always level thyroxine T4, which is the first line treatment for Hashimoto's disease or Graves' disease or other metabolic disorders. Uh, for adults, the uh, starting dose is 1.6 micrograms per one kilogram body weight daily, adjusted to, let's say, anywhere between 50 micrograms to 200 micrograms T4 daily, based on how uh, thyroid-stimulating hormone levels fluctuate uh, throughout this course 
of treatment. And in the elderly or adults with heart conditions, right, the dose is a little bit lower. Usually they start with a dose of 12.5 micrograms or 25 micrograms daily, and then that's increased as needed, keeping extra special attention to their heart rate and their blood pressure overall. Uh, if that doesn't work, there's a second line treatment for poor T4 to T3 converters. Lyotyronine, uh, better known as T3, pharmaceutical T3, good stuff. I've used it myself. For adults, the starting dose is usually 25 micrograms daily. Adjust the 50 micrograms to 75 micrograms daily based, again, on thyroid stimulating hormone levels and uh, perhaps uh, thyroxine T4 levels. And uh, there are some uh, various combination medications where the T4 to T3 ratio is either 4 to 1 or 8 to 1, meaning that you get a combination medication of either 50 micrograms T4 and 12.5 micrograms T3 or 100 micrograms T4 and 12.5 micrograms T3 daily. And that seems to be a little bit more favorable compared to solo treatment. There's always all armor thyroid, which is desiccated thyroid extract, a starting dose of 30 milligrams, aka one grain daily, which contains 38 micrograms T4 and nine micrograms T3, which is then increased as needed based on serum thyroid concentrations. There's also desiccated liver tablets, but we don't really know how much thyroid or iodine or selenium those desiccated liver tablets contain. So uh, start low, build your way up, I would say. But what we're after here in this video are the various thyromimetics, albeit limited to sobiterome, otherwise this video will be way too long, I'm sure of it. The thyromimetics include diiodothyropionic acid, eprotyrome, omzotyrome, resmatyrome, sobiterome, that's what we're after here, tiratricol, triiodothyroacetic acid, abbreviated to triac, and VK2809. When are they going to make names that are easy to pronounce? You motherfucking researcher.